Hi, it's Derek Watson here, The Angry Dentist. Um, I am lucky enough to be given um, some books by quintessence to review and um, I get to keep the books once I've reviewed them, which is nice, but um, it doesn't, doesn't really, I think, affect um, my opinion of the books. What I'm trying to do is uh, look at them from the point of view of a general dental practitioner, that's someone in primary care, so um, I think from my point of view they have to deliver value for money, you know. These books, the, the one I'm going to tell you about is called Successful Local um, Dental Anesthesia. It's written, uh, three, it's by Reed and Nustein and Drum Didismus, uh, American, three American authors. Um, and, um, you know, this is, it's about 57 pounds, this book, so none of them are, are cheap, you know, as you know, um, but they have to deliver value for money. So what I'm looking for is 57 pounds worth of information out of this book, you know, at least. Um, I'm pleased to say I'm going to start with, with a good one. I, I, this is one that I can recommend. Um, it's a nice book in that it's, it's sort of, um, it's packed full of information uh, and it's not like a tome, you know. It's actually uh, quite readable and the language is very readable. What they've done is they've, um, it's in a format which I think is really good, which is uh, they've done the clinical indications first, then they've confine themselves to mandibular anesthesia, then they've done maxillary anesthesia, supplemental anesthesia, endodontic anesthesia, etc. So it's quite logically split up. And within each chapter, um, they have broken the issues down into paragraphs. And in each paragraph is, uh, deals with, or each you know, small section deals with a separate issue. So for example, um, uh, posterior superior alveolar nerve block whether to repeat an injection after 30 minutes, whether uh, increasing the amount of adrenaline uh, or epinephrine in the uh, anaesth anaesthesia, increasing the volume, whether that's relevant, what uh, bupivacaine versus um, um, uh, mepivacaine or prilocaine, etc. Um, and you don't have to sort of wade through a lot of information to get some really useful stuff. You can see I've already bookmarked a couple of pages here. Here they go on about um, injection pain, the phases of a dental injection, uh, injecting the maxilla versus the mandible, etc. Needle size, and then the needle size it says. In conclusion, needle gauge 25, 27 and 30 gauge does not seem to matter in perception of pain in the oral cavity. So this is great. I mean, this is, a, you know, I spend a lot of time debating with my nurses whether we need thicker needles, thinner needles, which needles to buy, uh, which needles we've run out of, whether we can use other needles instead. And here it is telling me that the size of the needle is not really relevant, at least from the pain point of view. So if you want to use um, uh, an ID block needle uh, for an upper central, then you can do. Um, and in fact, some circumstances uh, you might want to because there's far less uh, back pressure in, uh, in terms of the flow rate through a, uh, an ID block needle. So um, the, the format I found very, very engaging and very good from, from a uh, practitioner's point of view. Um, and let's give you another gem. Here we are, onset of pulpal anesthesia. In most cases, um, the onset of pulpal anesthesia occurs within 5 to 19 minutes, and it gives you a, a mass of studies. I mean, this is all cross reference with the studies. Um, in conclusion, onset of pulpal anesthesia varies from approximately 9 minutes in the first molar to 19 minutes in the central incisor. And again, this is this is clinical gold from point, my point of view because it, this, we're talking about mandibular blocks here and I have timers on the computer Windows 10 now has a built-in timer and um, so we have like two minutes for the topical and then I've got five minutes for the anesthesia for the IT block and here they are telling me that you know nine minutes you'd be lucky 19 minutes on some you know, it takes to creep round to the middle. This is for pulpal anaesthesia, not soft tissue anaesthesia. It also tells you the difference between testing with a, by sticking someone with a probe and using cold testing in terms of um, soft tissue anaesthesia versus pulpal anaesthesia. So, um, you know, is the old way of getting the patient numb and sending them into the waiting room perhaps the best way of doing it? You know, are you doing them a favour by doing that? Right? Or, 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 I mean, who can afford to wait 9 to 19 minutes um, for anaesthesia? I mean, I can do, but I mean, I'd ha I would reorganise the workflow if that's how we I mean, you have to sort of 
reorganise everything. So you're, you're doing something else within the nine to 19 minutes that they were going now. So it's good, and it's full of stuff like this. The, every sort of uh, section has a conclusion, in conclusion. Um, my conclusion is that, um, you can see also, it's very, very well illustrated. On every page, almost, there's, uh, there's data, there's uh, pictures of the anatomy, there's um, um, tables, the, these are the references, um, technique pictures, etc., etc. Um, but the, the inconclusions are marvellous. What, what you're going to try and do, like I did probably, is just read the conclusions. Just go through the book, turn it in, what's the conclusion, what's the conclusion, what's the conclusion. I think they missed a trick in not putting all the conclusions together. They could have had a whole chapter full of conclusions and then said, and then referenced them to the actual text. Um, you could have really speed read the book then in that, in that case. Um, um, and also the conclusions are in sort of a dark blue, um, which is a little bit difficult to pick out. Now, I'm not colour blind, but I'm finding it difficult just to skim through and just see the conclusions. Perhaps they could have been in, in uh, something a bit more obvious, you know, like uh, back uh, highlight in, in yellow highlighter or something, because that's what you want to do, go through with a uh, highlighter and just highlight all the conclusions. But um, all in all, it, uh, about £57, this book on Amazon at the moment, 57.13. It's ISBN 9780867155136. I'll put that link in the uh, description. Um, I think this is well worth 57 quid. I think uh, patients like painless dentistry. They, love, you know, they like you to be nice to them and, and listen to them and be painless. And... Word of mouth recommendation is the best way of getting new patients and being painless is the best way of getting word of mouth recommendation. So I think this is a good book to start with. I do, I like it a lot. There will be some others that I probably won't be quite so keen about, but I'm happy to say this one is, is well worth the 57 quid. And the time it's going to take to read. And it's not going to take a massive amount of time to read it. And, you know, a lot of it you'll know already, but... Um, um, just a few things that uh, there'll be a few things in there, and you think, oh, right, oh, you know, perhaps I've had a problem with that. That's the the solution to that, or uh, you know, I can save a bit of time um, doing it a, a, a slightly different way. Um, doesn't um, do any harm, does it? Just to refresh everything we were probably taught 20, 30, 40 years ago in some cases. Right. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, successful local anaesthesia for restorative dentistry and endodontics. £57, pounds, published by Quintessence, and that gets a thumbs up. My name's Derek, I'm the Angry Dentist, and I'll see you soon.